You're now tuned into Mike Check Life to Life. Check, Mike. Check, waifu, waifu. Montel, is that you? Hey, yo, it's a blood moon out there. Check out Polo. He howling out there. This is episode one, five, two of my check, waifu, waifu. As always, it's brought to you by Lou Complex. Make sure you go to loucomplex.com. Use that offer code waifu. They got drops at what seems like every week. So check out Lou Complex as frequently as possible. Uh, we we'll really appreciate it uh, if you use the code white food to support us. Um, they'll appreciate it as well. It's also brought to you by our Patreon producers A B Aaron Brown, Dre to go G Johnny from Anime Lyrical Podcast, Cat the Pro from Chaotic Culture Podcast, explicitly Monique Williams and Nachi. Thank y'all so much for supporting this and many other episodes of the podcast. We appreciate y'all for supporting this, it means a lot. Um, my check white food, white food is the anime podcast that covers seasonal topics, seasonal anime. Um, on a weekly basis, we go live every Tuesday morning at 930 CST. I finally adjusted the clock on my computer to post that CST. So 930 AM CST is when new episodes of the podcast, you can listen on spy Spotify, iTunes, uh, uh fucking, uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts, actually, actually everywhere, maybe except for Pandora. I don't think we're on Pandora. Which, if you use Pandora to listen to podcasts, you're a psychopath. Um, I didn't know they even had that. Is it, is it random? They, <laughs> no, but they do have podcasts, though, because they had to adapt or get shut down because they was kind of behind the times. Anyway, uh, Tell, how you feeling, man? How you, how you doing today, tonight? I'm good. I'm good. You know, it's a lunar eclipse right now. Oh, is it really? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I don't know if you look, but the moon is like... It was completely gone a few minutes ago, and then it was uh, red. Damn. So I, I, it was pretty cool. Monique was very happy to see that. It was kind of a cool experience. Uh, Apollo got to see it. So, you know. Dope. Yeah, so speaking of Blood Moon. How you how you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good, man. I've, uh, I'm, I'm a little, I have was a little distracted today. I didn't realize it was Sunday because mm-hmm. I magically, and Tell don't know this yet, but I magically got access to Via Rising. This mother, yo, okay. and you know so what? Though, it, I thought about it. I thought about it. I swear to God, <laughs> hold up, hear me out, <laughs> hear me out. I don't even say nothing else. I was like looking at it, and I'm like, I I know this dude. I, I followed Damon Kim. He got access to. It. He said he's been playing it for like two weeks now. Been on the NDA. It's the I'm just like, I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry. Like people playing it. And I was literally looking to see if I can get access to it today just to try and see what I could do. To and it's like 17. Yeah, so today is the last day of the closed beta. Um, it's under NDA, so, but by the time this episode airs, it'll be out to everybody because it goes live Tuesday. The game goes live Tuesday. But what for those of you that don't know, I'm an avid PC gamer, okay? This is a, a game that me, both me and Tell was looking forward to for a very long time. Um, probably from the moment they announced it, we, we were talking about we was going to play it. So it's a survival <laughs> Vampire game, and I've been playing it. I played it. I got to play it for about six hours today. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, y'all, this my brother, y'all. <laughs> yeah, this my brother. He ain't said shit to me, y'all. Mm-hmm. And that's why uh, I was a little distracted today. Um, I was ill prepared. Okay. So look, look. I know this is an anime podcast, but we since about whatever, we're sorry. interested in talking about or playing this game in general, let's let's. Let's let's talk about your experience. Can we talk about that? Yeah, you said yeah, that the NBA do will be be done by the time this episode airs. Mm-hmm. So yeah, let's talk about it. How, what was the experience like? What was it like? Uh, okay, so I played again the last day of the closed beta. So the, the I obviously chose a PvP server. Um, mm-hmm. there, there's 40 players per server, and um, it's intense. And by intense, I mean like fucking hard. Okay, like. And you're a vampire. You get burned by daylight. Daylight fucking damn near instantly kills you. It's disgustingly how strong it is. At least in the early game. Um, I end up playing with legal. Um, 
Legal Overdose is a streamer, a becoming VTuber streamer. Uh, it was it was something. It was something. At first, we were frustrated. At first, we didn't like it. At first, we kind of hated it until we got our feet under us and we understood what the game was trying to tell us what to do. Once we understood what to do, the, the fucking going to kill bosses to get abilities to going to fucking gather materials throughout a night to build this fucking epic ass castle that we started to build and by the time like I was like by the time the server shut down this fucking castle I built cause I was the mainly main one building legal ain't do shit um it was fucking insane it was dope it was sick uh but I'm looking forward to the launch it, it launches the, the day this episode goes live hell by the time y'all listen to this I'm probably streaming it on Twitch right now so Make sure y'all go to twitch.tv slash polo barfly. I'm probably live right now in a suit playing this game. But I digress. It's it's hard. It's hard as fuck though. It's very, very hard. Challenging. Is it is it like don't starve hard? Like you know how like you get on like day forty on don't starve and it's like it's impossible to live unless it's like for y'all. No. Um, because the the I guess the further it pro- like the further the days progress, hopefully you're progressing, which means that you have more power, which means you're more capable, which means you're able to survive better. So early game is don't starve day 40 hard. And then later game is when it becomes easier because you become more powerful, et cetera, et cetera. I I, I guess that makes sense for this kind of world, right? Because you're a vampire Mm -hmm. and you're a vampire probably starting off with very little. So you got to build your way up to Mm -hmm. something. Yep. To even be able to function in this world, yep. so like, what's the uh, combat like? Battle right. Well, like, how how did it feel? It felt like just like battle right, but it felt like good, like how battle right felt. No different than battle right. <laughs> okay, no different. Yeah. And so W A S D the movement from the top down. You you aim your mouse to aim your abilities. You use you know skill abilities or whatever. Um, it's it's battle right. If. And, and, but when you're going against like other players, right? So like I'm assuming you and Legal, y'all automatically knew y'all were teammates, right? Did they let y'all like queue up together so y'all didn't cause damage to each other, or was it possible for you to like friendly fire him while other people were possibly friendly firing their own partners? So the way it works is you start a clan. And once you start a clan, you invite that person to your clan. It's a ten person clan. Uh and you're basically all friendly. So um Okay. It's already gonna be Five, four of us, four of us. Me, you, legal, and Malik. So we're gonna be rolling deep on the PvP server. Hopefully, we don't get, get put down. Um, all right, sorry, sorry. I had to, I had to mention that. I know, I know, the tale was gonna be a surprise, so I had to. Very, <laughs> very saudi for, for <laughs> very saudi And I'm, I'm gonna just be real with y'all. I ain't that Saudi. <laughs> I'm happy he got to play it. So it, it, I know if Polo liked it, then I'm gonna like it. Mm-hmm. Um. And I'm not saying because we like the same games. I don't think we really like no. a lot of the same games. But I think that we both had our eye on this game. And the the aspects of the game that we both are going to like are there. Yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm super hyped that he is, he's enjoying it, y'all. Yeah, it's it's shocking. It's shocking how good it is. Again, it's frustrating at first, though. So when you first get it, you're going to be pissed off trying to fucking dodge the sunlight via ducking in tre- the shadows of trees and shit. It, it's insane. It's insane. Make sure y'all check me out on Twitch. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm probably streaming it right now. Uh, if you're watching it, by the time this goes air, this this podcast airs. But other than that, man, I've, I've been pretty good, man. So far, so good. Um, what is your episode of the week this week, Montel? Episode of the week this week would have to be uh, go 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 go. Okay, well, summertime rendering. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's got to it's gotta be that for me. Yeah, uh, I agree with that, and I can't even go against it. Everything else is real good, but um, for some reason, this season of anime is starting to take a turn. Um, and by a turn, I mean the turn of the mundane. Um, Aharine is becoming... Very tedious and, and kind of boring to watch now. Uh, the only thing that's really improving week to week is summertime rendering. Is Spy Family, of course, obviously. Um, Love After World Domination is continuing to improve. And Trapped in the Dating mm-hmm. Sim. Trapped in the Dating Sim continues to get better. 
but everything else is becoming super well maybe sycamore not just a cutie that's something if you want to just turn on and get some i don't know uh what's the word i'm looking for some uh, uh fucking word i'm looking for just some some proper oh, chill so yeah some proper chill basically like it's fucking proper chill each episode is there's nothing that's going to stress you out whatsoever there's not even it's not even a a overly comedic show is it's just it's just a chill show to watch and i enjoy it but everything else like fucking the executioner and her way of life became awful uh, i don't like that shit anymore um <laughs> i absolutely don't uh that bad? it's yeah it's not good um i it was it's been hard for me to finish the episodes lately so what has been what has been is me watching a show and while i'm watching the show i'm like man when is this shit gonna end just checking the time like when is this episode gonna fucking end i'm looking at the time i'm having the exact same opposite I, i'm having the exact opposite feeling i'm having with spy family where the episode flies by this shit feels like i'm watching it for 45 minutes every time i turn on an episode i couldn't even finish episode seven was it episode seven no episode five because i'm like fuck man and i got like I still got like 10 minutes of episode 5 left And I didn't even start episode 6 I'm like I'm, I'm done with this shit It's stupid um, A couple of cuckoos is okay I, I don't like it as much as I thought I would I got 24 episodes So there's still time for that to get better Um, And then The Dawn of a New Witch Now I learned something about this show What you learned? And it, it's not that I dropped it because it was bad Uh, I, I, I am two episodes behind on this show because this is a fucking the episode the two episodes I watched previously shows a character that I knew I recognized before and the character that I recognized was from what the fuck is that show called sorry uh yeah grim grimoire of zero yeah so it's a it's a it's a basically a sequel to that Mm -hmm. or or far in the future sequel however i never finished grimoire of of zero so i'm like shit man maybe i should go back and finish watching that probably Um, make a little bit more sense for this exactly so i can enjoy the dawn of of the witch more so that's what i plan on doing um sometimes probably not this week because v rising but and i was thinking that too because i thought there was an anime called grimoire of zero mm -hmm. because they keep mentioning it mentioning or i'm not gonna say keep mentioning it but they mentioned it like maybe two or three episodes ago yeah and I, I feel so, like I feel like we're missing a huge chunk. Episode. Yeah, because I didn't watch Grimoire Zero. I don't believe. Yeah, yeah. I, I like started episode to episode three or something like that. But it was something I will have to start over anyway. But now, now before we started recording, you brought up a pretty interesting topic, right? And you kind of just said it here with Dawn of the Witch, but you said like you dropped, mm-hmm. dropped Dawn of the Witch, right? Well, what, else really you, dropped. what else did you drop? You drop anything? Yeah, yeah. The, I think I'm officially dropping a Ah um. Yeah, I think I'm officially dropping that because it's again, it's so tedious. It's just silly moments between these two characters, and they're adorable and they're not bad. It's not a bad show, but it's just not worth my time anymore. Yeah. Um. Now I uh I dropped the last summoner. Now I I came into the anime a little late into the season in general, and although I don't entirely hate it, it just got almost very like. Zatch Bell ish, mm. but like worse animation because mm. it had some really like decent like scenery, some good moments, but it it just started to really really fall off, and it almost seems like too childish. You know, it's a it's a Chinese anime, mm-hmm. but it, it just it, it feels like it's get, getting worse. Like the first episode was okay, second episode was okay, and then like everything after that was just like okay, I cannot watch this and I'll be okay. Yeah, it's starting to fall. Like the the season's starting to fall. I mean, I'm quitting heroing still pretty okay, but it's not anything spectacular anymore. Yeah, I'm still gonna it, watch it, it. What do you think? What do you think the issue is? You think it's dwell like some of these anime are dwelling on the same concept for too long? Yes, because I feel like Dawn of the Witch, like I had no idea where it was gonna go, and even like right now, like with Rise of the Shield Hero, <laughs> I have very little idea <laughs> as to where this anime is, is thinking it's going to take us. Well, And I, I'm only hoping it's going to get better. 
I'm glad you mentioned that, Montel, because a quick update on the Rising Little Shield Hero. So for those of you who are listening to this episode without listening to last week's episode, go back to listen to last week's episode because we touched on what what is going wrong with Rising of the Shield Hero this season. Um, but there's an update. So apparently the writer of the show said that this arc was the hardest arc for them to write. Like it was it was just hard to write. It was just it's his least favorite. It's their least favorite. I'm sorry, I don't want to assume genders because I don't know. But yeah. it's their least favorite arc in the entire series. So with that being said, everything that's happening in this this tortoise arc and why it's being told the way it's being told, even though everything that I mentioned last week in episode 151 about the stuff that they skipped would have made this better, like way better. Like, I I mean, I get it. He just want to get out this fucking arc so he can move on to the juice. So that also kind of gives me another question, right? Do you think in scenarios like this, because obviously Promise Neverland, they took, Mm. a lot of liberties in writing do you think that you would have rather them have taken liberties and like try to make this section better so it didn't feel like we were just in this lull of the six episodes into the season so it's the, it's one thing that we don't quite understand and it's the the contract between animator uh publisher and and just just those studios itself right so we don't quite understand the book end deals behind that so like what they're scheduled to animate or like what what's their obligation to animate i should say and how many episodes or how much it costs and what what the, the method is so I, again i said this a couple of weeks ago this would have benefited from 22 episodes because of all the stuff that they skipped okay but who knows? The writer said, hey, yo, this is my least fucking favorite arc. Let's get the fuck out of this arc because I don't even want to deal with it. It was the hardest for me to write. So let's get out of this arc and let's move on to the juice. And that's what we're supposedly getting next week. Into after. No, is it next? Yeah. Yeah. Next week. We're getting into the juice. Back to the meat and potatoes of what Rising of the Shield really is. Um, and what and, and apparently what made people love it. So. I I just think it's the you know the writer like yo I just I just want to go you know sadly yeah. is it is it worth it yeah because I feel like um I feel like the people who are watching it are going to continue to watch it because like all of us they're kind of shackled you know and the thing about the anime community is when they're rabbit fans of something um like fucking reincarnated as a slime saw that blow up mm-hmm. rising of the shield saw this blow up attack on titan always had it but they got that blow up they gonna stick with it no matter how good or bad something is yeah um, and let's be fair uh reincarnated as a slime although i loved parts of that last season mm-hmm. it was the slowest yes the slowest anime i think we watched almost the entirety of what last year yeah it was it was slow as fuck, but it, I, I still, and I, I'm not trying to even be funny. I found the slowness and that more entertaining than some of what I'm watching for Rising of a Show Hero. Yeah, and I fucking agree with that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I I just feel like it's extremely important for like us to kind of understand, like you know, I don't know, I don't know, I I just, I just don't know that, if it's is this like. Is, am the I writer make, knows they didn't like this, so you know yeah. they, they want they they're right and wanting to get past it. So I, I'm just more like I was just asking more of the question, like, do you think that as a writer, they should have taken the time and just said, and you just know what, do I don't it. I don't mess with this. Let's let's try and just let's let's at least try and make this bearable. You know, if I hate it, I know the the watchers and viewers and listeners and whatever who gonna have it on, they're gonna hate it too. Yes. Let's at least try and make it enjoyable while I hate it, you know, something like that. Right. But also I get speeding through it because you're not I mean, you're not going. And then you think about it, he say they say they're like, Okay, just give me six episodes. Just give me six episodes. I'm gonna knock this shit out in six episodes. And then we continue on from the juice. So he's probably like, six episodes is a risk I'm willing to take in order to hopefully better the storytelling going forward. 
So I don't know. I think I think it was the right move. It might have been the right move, even though I I feel like I feel a little let down. Even though I wasn't even like I'm not even the biggest fan of Ryzen, but I I feel a little let down. I do feel like this was the right move, the right take. All I know is I better get a fucking um motherfucking uh fucking rezero mm-hmm. season soon. Yeah, I don't know what's taking so long. They didn't they studio go under? Yeah, White Fox. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna look that up real quick. They never they never told us anything after that, really. You know what show has actually been doing? Well, what I've been also enjoying though. Which one? That fucking skeleton night one. Yeah, bro. I've been liking it's, that. It's it's mad chill, but it's also an interesting, especially in this latest episode where um, I thought we got one of the most important facts about this anime. Without going into too many spoilers, the important fact we got about it is we know our main character is OP. He got all the stats in the world, right? Yeah. But we also found out that all the stats in the world has nothing to compare with skill. <laughs> People with skill will still mop you yeah, like absolutely. you didn't have any special abilities. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil that, but it's worth it. It was, it was yeah, great. it was great. <laughs> it was amazing. So, <sighs> White Fox isn't under. They're still going. They're dropping something in July of 2022. Uh, I don't know what's going on with ReZero though. It's pissing me off. That's good news though. I mean, at least at least they're not under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, <sighs> what you got for me? Okay, so uh, what well, what are we gonna talk about in spoiler talk? So I don't bring nothing. Oh, good, valid point. Of, of summertime rendering, of course. Spy family, of course. We can talk about Tomodachi game again. Yeah, 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 yes, we can. Yes, we can. All right. Very interesting episode of Tomodachi game. All right. So since we're doing that, I want to uh, talk about a little gem that Love After World of Domination. Yes. Um, World Domination dropped on us, and that that gem being uh, spoiler, just a little bit, little bit of spoiler. I'm not going to spoil too much. That gem being the fact that. Uh, they wanted to transform her, right? Mm-hmm. Morph her into a gorilla, give her or fuse her with a gorilla so she gets like all of that ability on yeah. top of whatever power she has, right? Yeah. And we're talking about this and me and my, my wife, Monique, we talk about this all the time and I'm pretty sure Polo has probably talked about it or thought about this at some point in time. This episode was basically about people pleasing. Mm. You do something for people because that's what you think you're supposed to do or you kind of get gain this imposter yes. syndrome where you have to do something because you're trying to live up to these different yes. names and what you what you think you should be because their family did this and that. And people keep putting you putting you under more and more pressure because to 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 tell them. Yeah, it, it, the sister is she said, I hope you keep fighting because I'm gonna be there with you. You know, the the idea that you do something just because that's what's expected of you mm-hmm. is harsh. And the way they demonstrated the fact that she has a love interest who just says, I want you to do whatever you want to do, regardless of whatever it is, right? Like, a lot of times people are looking for that, that tell me to do it, tell me not to do it. But he still left it in her ballpark to say, no, you do it, but what do you want to do? Yes. And that's always important. What do you want to do? Polo and I, we wake up and be like, we want to do this podcast wake up like I want to be a trainer I want to be a dad I want to be a husband all these different things right Mm -hmm. when you wake up what do you want to do are you living the life that someone else told you live because you ain't have a choice and I thought that was a great way of it. and they didn't know they didn't go into all those details specifically but but being someone yeah being someone who has lived through that because my family is very uh very strict. And yes, yeah. I, I was I was in trouble for getting ninety eight percent on yes. tests and stuff like that. I remember. I would never forget it. I would never forget it. I used to fucking play. What, bro? If I got a ninety eight, my mom would lose her mind. She'd be so fucking happy. Yeah, bro. Polo, polo, no. Oh, I but, know. Uh, I know. I know very all too well. <laughs> but yeah, like 
it, are you doing this because you just expect yourself to live up to these expectations and are you being happy for yourself what? i thought that was dope i really thought that was an amazing Absolutely, amazing part bro. of this week let's let's talk about that for a little bit let's dive a little bit deeper into that it may get it out of get out of anime but we did that last week and it seems to have went over well so let's do that again i i never understood the people pleasing thing i see it all the fucking time on this this thing we live on called the internet i don't know how or why people do it i would never try to understand it but like like maybe you can help me out with with this because you understand people more i don't try to understand people more so <laughs> so that's like a huge difference between me and you like i don't care to understand people i don't really give a damn about people unless they're a person in my life you know what i'm saying right so that's just always how i live i love y'all I, I thank y'all for listening i appreciate the support and it means a lot to me and i considered everybody that i interact with via this podcast and even the people that just listen to me because y'all know so much about us and me i consider y'all uh, to be a friend like like I, y'all know me well enough to know some sh- some shit about me for listening to 152 episodes of this podcast or even just 100 or even just 50 for that fucking matter so i'm not saying like i don't care about y'all i just i what i'm saying is i don't care to try to please y'all as a podcast and, host which is and very to weird be to fair what, what he sorry. just said <laughs> to be fair with what Polo just said, uh, he also, uh, he's not a people pleaser for his own family or anything no, like that. No, no. Yeah, no, absolutely not. So don't take it as like an offense that like you're not special enough for them people please. Polo ain't people pleasing nobody. Absolutely that's, not. That's, that's what he's saying. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tell. Thank you. But here, here's my thing. The, where Polo and I differ on that is like, because I'm not, I don't really consider myself a people pleaser. Um, I think I have two different two different things I do like right like I think I can blend into any group and that's just like uh, I, I go into groups I see people sure. and I realize what they like and I just blend in yeah. um, but I'm not I am absolutely by no means uh, can you tell me or expect me to do something and just think like I'm gonna do it because it's gonna make you happy and I don't, I don't think that way uh, mostly because my mom yeah. never my mom never rocked and, with that and that's I, I guess that's where we are similar because I, I'm the same way I, I can blend in with anybody I can uh, quote unquote hang with the cool kids or, or chill with the nerds or however you want to look at it I could do that shit too that's easy always but I, we, we nev- I never I never understood why people would try to please other people so and, so the, the, the I think the aspect of people pleasing is like it's not only is it sometimes easier to kind of just people please because then you don't have to worry about any kind of backlash or less mm. backlash in your mind but uh you less of that uh less of that actual weight of trying to make that decision yourself or do something yourself and you know just going on with what's expected with you and not doing what what you specifically want to do in all scenarios it, it probably relieves a little bit of like that pressure to say like, hey, I don't want to be a doctor. I'd rather be, or I don't want to be a, a radiation oncologist. I'd rather be a psychologist, you know, I see. something like that, you know, because you don't have to take on that responsibility of saying, all right, there's a path already given to me. This is already what's expected of me, but now I'm going to set out and do my own thing. Uh, and that that's just part of it. But also the, the fact that like sometimes people get beat down mm-hmm. by like family members, friends and whatnot yes. so much that it gets to that point to where it's like, no, I'm just going to do this because I know it's going to make them feel better. And regardless, cause you know, there's a lot of emotion that comes into that. Like you got, might have friends who go through a lot of trauma yes. and believe me, we both got plenty of friends that go through trauma. Absolutely. You might have family members that go through trauma. And instead of like, let's say you might think instead of increasing that trauma, I'm just going to do what they want. Or you might have gone through a bunch of trauma instead of increasing your own personal trauma. You're just going to do it regardless of knowing like that is, that is still your trauma. And I would even think of it as like an anxiety response. Like you have anxiety and instead of dealing with your anxiety, just say, boom, right. Avoid that conflict. I'm going to people please. Instead of saying, hell no. Like my, my Monique and I, we we you already know this. We heading back to Cleveland soon. Mm-hmm. We told my parents, ain't nobody kissing our babies. First of all, it's too much COVID going on. Yes, you know, and like the the ain't nobody kissing our babies. It just is what it is. Like y'all look, y'all see the babies. They've been here. 
you know, y'all ain't got to see them yet, but like, I can't, <laughs> if I got to fly them all the way back 1600 miles or whatever, back to, back to Houston or Texas in general, and they're going to be sick on my way back. That's a whole problem for me. Yes. And I'm not putting their life at risk like that. They're going to see y'all. That's cool. You ain't going to be holding my babies all like that. They, they <laughs> might, you might get a, a cursory hole. All right. Now give me my baby back. But that's just, that's just what it is. Like, I'm not, I'm not in that mode right now to be like I can even afford that. So, yeah. I and, and this, you said something that instantly clicked as soon as because I again I don't I never understood people pleasing thing because again I never really cared to I don't like even as even as like I, I worked in retail for over ten years like I, I've I've done the quote unquote people pleasing but that was work. You know, I'm I'm working. I'm I'm selling something because right. so it still works for you in the end. It still works for me because it made me money. So like I like <laughs> God, man. I, I just I didn't get it until you mentioned that to avoid conflict. Like there are people who have been burdened with expectation. And shout out to Rob. We always talk about tempering expectations on TV shows, but like hey. just just tempering expectations with life too. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when people, when mom and dad and uncle and, and brothers and sisters and are all doing something special, and your parents are looking at you, putting this expectation on you, you want to try to live up to that expectation. There's some yeah. people that, that that do like that. Like, and I completely understand that. I am cool. lucky enough to be able to talk to my mother and say I'm I'm doing whatever I want but what I am going to do mom is I'm going to come to you with advice when I need it because I I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to hear you out you know what I'm saying because I feel like I could, I could trust I could trust your word with a lot of things because you you know for instance you've been in the sale business for as long as I've been alive so like that is the kind of stuff I I understand now because again, I never, I never got it. I never got the right. people who get on Twitter and do whatever they can to try to please as many people as possible. Fucking, I, I seen people kowtow to, I don't know, to quote unquote famous people. I, I, I done seen a lot of shit, and I'm just sitting there like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Just stop. <laughs> just sit down. Make do do you. Make your content do your have your own voice. Just do you, and just chill the fuck out. Just relax, you know, <laughs> because people stress. People people really do stress out about this shit, and For it's, real. and it's because they I, they try to people please. And I am not here to people please. I am here to relate and meditate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's go. Hey. <laughs> like that's that's it. If y'all we just here to you know, if y'all relate to us and listen to us and rock with us. Y'all get it, but I just, y'all just gotta. A lot of people just gotta chill. That's it. Don't don't people please. <laughs> <laughs> Take uh, a chill pill. Not not any actual pills, but you know. Chill pill. <laughs> Facts. Uh, all right, man. Let's get to know my check waifu waifu on episode one fifty two. Um, this is part of the podcast where you get to know us a little bit better. This is where one of us rolls a random number generator. The other reads a question associated with that number. And this week, it's my turn to read a question. Tell turn to roll a random number generator. We have 35 questions in the list. 25. Would you rather vacation in Hawaii or Alaska? <laughs> First of all, why would you put that I in moved the list? out of the cold? I moved out of the cold. Ain't no fucking way. But I'm gonna also be real here. I'm gonna choose neither, and I'm gonna I'm tell you why I'm gonna choose neither. I found out about the story of like the Hawaiian natives, mm-hmm. and and how like basically their entire livelihood and culture was basically stripped from them and they're basically just a tourist island because that's what America has done to them. I'm not trying to visit Hawaii. I'll visit somewhere else. But if I had to choose between an island and a cold, desolate world that sees sun half the year, <laughs> I'm going to choose the <laughs> island, bro. Ain't no way. Yeah. And, and learning about the Hawaii thing is 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 is, is important too. I understand that. I, I, that's very important. But I'm going to counter you with a right hook and just say like they that this is they have to live off those tours now. Like if you don't tour, that that state is ruined. So to support them, 
if you want to support them, it is kind of best that you travel and visit and you know spend money. <laughs> I'm gonna just say that. Right. Don't go there if you broke. Yeah. Don't go there with thinking you got 150. dollars You're gonna last off that. Go there with like a couple thousand. Yeah. And spend <laughs> and, that money. And, just spend it. Right. Spend that money and support them any way you possibly can without being ignorant. That's. That's what I'll have to say to that. But I'm I'm choosing why. I'm not fucking going to a lot. I know what? why. Why would anyone want to do that, bro? What's funny? <laughs> come on. I got a I got a friend that lived in North Carolina who got married in Alaska. And I was like, come on, bro. I mean That they, was your that, that was your ideal wedding. So my sister, uh I'm telling those, but my sister actually lived in Hawaii with my father. No, not Hawaii, Alaska with my father for a while. You ain't notice? I guess it was short lived. So no, I didn't. I don't know. I don't think I knew that it was short lived. Um, but f- for when my sister became homeschooled, I remember. Yeah, she she moved to Alaska with my father because she was giving my mom a hard time. You know, teenage girl stuff. Yeah. Um, and that that obviously didn't last long because my father couldn't handle teenage girl stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> but she she said it was pretty. Um, it was annoying that it was dark for most of the time that she was there. Like that's fucking. It just seems depressing. I don't. Who would want to do that? You ever seen the movie uh, Thirty Days of Night? Yeah, but that's that's also why. Like, once you become an Alaskan native, they start paying you to stay there. Mm-hmm. At least that's what I heard. I, I'm they not do. sure if it's true. They get like a nine hundred dollars stipend or something like that for living. Yeah, because they know it's the 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 state in the country with the most suicides, the highest depression rates. It's kind of wild. It's wild. The fact that it's even a state is wild to me. Cause you gotta go through oh, Canada to get there. I gotta slide all the way through Canada to say hi to everybody. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It make no ain't, sense. Ain't, ain't no road trips to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> Catch that plane, bro. That's facts. Facts. You gonna be on that plane for ten hours trying to get to a whole other country? Oh man, hey, we got thirty four questions in this list. We gotta start re upping on the questions so we can. Uh, let, let, let's not re up until we get to like 10 let's try and like thin them out as much as possible oh you oh you trying to break down the list okay yeah i'm trying to break it down and then we'll start over with, with a new list let's do it let's do it uh all right man we're gonna take this quick break and when we come back we're gonna spoil summertime rendering spy family and tamadachi game we'll be right back after this
Hey, welcome back to episode 152 of Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Uh, I, I'm not going to cut out whatever I accidentally just recorded there. <laughs> I don't think it was anything, though. Um, Rob just tweeted at me. He said, uh, I don't know if Mike Check Waifu is recording uh, right now or not, but I just got to say, man, this spring season has been incredible so far. And I'm looking, uh, and it's looking like the summer season is gonna follow suit. I think we're gonna talk about that next week. Oh, the summer season. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think that'll be a good time to bring up that uh that tweet and talk about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and bookmark that. Shout out to Tell for teaching me how to bookmark on Twitter. Like I ain't been on Twitter for eleven years almost. Right. <laughs> no, twelve years. I've been on Twitter for twelve years. Yeah, I was say it's definitely been longer than eleven years. How long have I been on Twitter? I'm a demon. Since 2009. Yep. Yep. March 2009. Jesus Christ. And 13 I'm, years. And I'm still not people pleasing. Uh, So <laughs> let's get into yeah. this. <laughs> let's get into the sports talk, man. Let's talk about since most people watch Spy Family. Of course, we're going to start off with that first. Um, another incredible episode. Hard to not want to pick it as uh episode of the week, but we watched Summertime Rendering, so... Yeah, it's kind of easy at the same time. I mean, I mean, we also had that great moment between Anya and uh, Yor. Yes, man. Because when when Yor saw that Anya wasn't there and she came out and hit dude with the grocery bag, <laughs> I was like, "Yes, let's go." The spy family is way too good. It's way it too is. Good. Uh. It's like. The, and you know what's good about it what makes it good is that it's so wholesome and chill but like the action moments they feel like legitimate like, like legitimate great action scenes like yes you know what that is it's pacing the mm, fucking mm-hmm. pacing is immaculate man it's, it's so perfect that you can't it can't I don't think in my entire life I think in my entire life this is the best pacing I've ever seen watching an anime as far as like beat to beat story progression. It doesn't feel out of place anymore. It doesn't feel out of place. It's easy to understand. You can wrap your head around it extremely easily, even subbed. I'm pretty sure the fucking dub. Dub, I got to listen to the dub when the the episode drop because if it don't equal to what this is, I'm going to be so sad. But what's up? I was going to say what I think plays to the like the brilliance of this show spy family right what makes it makes that pacing so good is that our characters have these specific levels there's like no in between Mm -hmm. for our characters they're either in their role which is a spy assassin telepath or in their role which is a family yeah they have they have a a, a, like a regular and then they have an extreme Mm -hmm. so like it's really good like how how it plays off of each other and it almost makes me feel like if if they knew each other were like spies and assassins because i know we asked this question before it probably wouldn't feel so good it probably could not like give us this same kind of extreme where like because they're all trying to be, play normal around each other. The only person who knows the truth is Anya, obviously. But if we, if all of our characters knew, it would it would have to go lean more towards the extreme. Mm, damn. But because it isn't, they they got to keep this happy medium of family slash assassin slash spy slash telepath. You know. You fucking spitting right now, bro. You are absolutely right. And I, because I say. Because we discussed this slightly last week, and I said I think it would be cooler if they knew because I feel like they would be just an unstoppable force, which is absolutely true. Absolutely true. But will it still have the same pacing? Will it still have the same beat to beat character moment? No, it won't. What, what I think that idea sets the tone for, though, Mission Yozakura family. Uh, So, yeah, yeah. You know what I see Mission Yozakura family doing? Uh, have you you haven't seen not one episode of Comey Can't Communicate? Nope. But you have watched Kaguya Sama Love is War. Yep. They're gonna do that with a small story story beats per episode. Which is fine. I don't think it's gonna be as good as Spy Family though, as far as the yeah. pacing goes. Well, I was also and I know this is a Spy Family segment, but Mission is a core family they have chapters upon chapters where it's just straight action, like four or five chapters of straight like it's active and then it goes back to like okay back to the storytelling with the family and stuff like that but that's only to like 
solve with like the main problems and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like the overarching background story, which is the secret between you know yeah. family and, and him. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it could, be, it could. Be. I it is priming it though. It is priming it. I think Spy yeah. Family is the prime for Mission. It was a core family to make a big splash. As soon as like Spy Family done, and I'm not talking about Spy Family these twelve. I'm talking about the the whole season. Core one, core two. When those twenty four episodes are done, I think Mission Yosa Core Family will be announced and that shit gonna pop off. It's gonna For sure. it's already gonna pop off because it's it it's so popular already, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be time and I, I'm looking forward to it. You know what my favorite part about what the pacing of this episode did? What was it? Is when your started Anya's training. Mm-hmm. But they didn't show the full training session. What they did was they waited till she was in school. And they use these quick little flashes of her instructing Anya. Okay, this is what you want to do in this situation, and she she put that into use. And when she put that into use, it led it to the most the fucking sickest moments ever. <laughs> but the, the, what made the training awesome on top of that was like the little context of smile. Mm-hmm. And it, sometimes you don't need to be aggressive. Sometimes you can just smile, and the situation will get better. And Anya's calling you a liar <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the smile didn't work. It's making it worse. <laughs> but she straight, she did. She Anya, yo, that was a great moment. She looked down the hall to see if the teacher was there, and straight punched dude across the room. Sat him, and I love. I even loved how the way the uh, the master responded. She was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, she didn't do that to." To just for herself, she did that for a friend, and Danya, of course, cleaned it up well. It's it's so how elegant, how, how exactly. So I got a question, and neither one of us knows the answers to this, but I, I've seen pictures, and maybe these are just people fucking rule twenty four in it, being weird and shit. How how, do you, how Twitter is, but are they or do you think they're going to go the Anya goes to the teenager route and we'll see that as well uh i don't think so because although and i mean at least not yet and i only say that for the fact that um uh, a teenager although they can be wholesome yes there's too much love in this anya currently right Mm -hmm. like even like she's six now but when she turns eight she's probably gonna look the same so even if they gave us like two years progression, it's gonna be like, oh, Anya's the same. If they gave us 10, she'll be a little bit older, but she's still gonna be like, I think even if she, if she did go 10, I, I would assume that she's all, as smart as an adult at that point because of who she is. Yeah. But she would still be like cute and, and wholesome, mostly for the fact that she's keeping her telepathic abilities away from her parents. You're right. I, I would just more like to see the, the relationship with uh, Yor and Lloyd develop and although they are on a contractual relationship that mm-hmm. they're still very much like they've actually grown to love each other and now they're legitimately keeping their side hustles from each other mm-hmm. and it's be- and it could become a problem because of love beca- and getting involved yeah I think I am looking forward to that more so like I said I just I just see these weirdos on Twitter with these f- fan arts and you know, I think they so weird. They so, so weird, bro. Fucking that, weird. Like, not to say fan art is weird, but anything where you're objectifying a child or yeah, aging up or aging fantasizing up. about yeah, them, yeah, go, ahead and, go ahead and hold that L, bro. Very much so. Very much so. Take that L to bed with you. Uh, yeah, I like it though. I, I love it. I just fucking love the fact that Wit and Clover works is just putting their elbows into this shit animation wise. And it's and it's not like again, it's not extravagant. It's not they're not demon slaying this shit up. But it's still it's unique enough to where it's it's unique. <laughs> you know? I mean, I find it hard to say it's not extravagant. Like that's weird. To me, I ain't gonna lie to you because it's not even though even though it's not like got all the super particle effects. Yeah, it's not. I like, I like to th- I like to think of the animation as like it it works so well with this specific anime that it's almost like perfect. Like I don't want to see Demon Slayer level animation on this because it it has too many different other elements yeah, that make it and, better than Demon Slayer in those areas. Right, I'm not saying that it has to. I'm I'm saying it's not even like it's not even like fucking Vivi level. It's not even doing the, the extreme detail type shit that Vivi does or, you know, that Wit is known for. It's just doing, it's doing its own thing. And that's what I like about right. it. 
that's what I love about it more so than anything else. It's, it's being spot family because again when it, when the action do pop off and they start to go fucking sketched out That's on some right. of the scenes it looks amazing it looks incredible yeah <laughs> the faces always get me and we talked about it yes. last in the last episode but when he did the little skip to the phone when they called <laughs> yeah. I mean, that shit was hard bro it was hard, hard. hard. <laughs> it's so good it's so good so I'm uh, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to more as always but with that being said let's go do we want to end with summertime rendering or we want to end with Tamadachi I think Tamadachi game can be a quick, quick talk so we can end on Tamadachi game. All right, let's go to summertime rendering. This fucking incredible ass show. Shout out to Rob in our Discord. <laughs> At underscore Rob Jason. Man, I don't know how fucking summertime rendering just keep getting better. I don't either, bro. And I, have I don't to know agree what, they, what they put. I don't know what they put in the juice. Fuck, bro. Um, exactly. But like Polo said earlier, it got to the juice, but that was at episode one. Um, <laughs> summertime rendering is really good. It's crazy. Oh my God, the 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 way they're setting up rules was spectacular. Again, because they didn't do it in episode one, they setting up rules right now. We what episode number are we on right now? Episode five. So <laughs> they set up rules in episode five out of in a twenty five minute episode. Now, now I get it. Now I get why there's 25 episodes in a show because it's a lot to cover and I don't feel like it's going to be too much because mm-hmm. I, I think it's going to be necessary because what they show is they gave us snippets of the island and just pieces of shit that people know and things that happened and fucking all of it that just have you curious but not in a curious kind of Cock blocky way like Platinum Men used to, or a curious cock blocky way like Tomodachi Game is trying to do. We're gonna get to that a little bit later, but it's like it's enticing you with lore and rules that you are fucking intrigued by because they but, give you more than enough for you to appreciate it. Like, for example, the fucking the festival went on and mm-hmm. we actually saw the Antagon- the, the villain I'm not gonna say antagonist Cause it ain't no, just no antagonist It's the fucking villain of the show mm-hmm. A demon <laughs> Like straight up demon Trying to summon mother And apparently they do and, and that was one of the things that That blew my mind about this episode Was the fact that It still gives us stuff we don't Expect Yes Right Like going back to what you were talking about with Um Let's say his ability. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They gave us stuff we didn't expect. Um, with the the villain, the antagonist, we weren't expecting that. We were we were expecting a more dive into like what the other shadows were doing, right? Yes. And we got that. We got that in a in a very well mannered, well paced, like placed moment. Mm-hmm. But it was like when we led up to going up those stairs and we see like who really who really running the show right now. It's fucking African American Slender Man in this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you right you're not wrong though. Um uh, and like we so we got so much information though. Like so we know that the shadows can be killed with the with what's her name? Shotgun. By shooting the shadow. Shooting the shadow that blew The my shadows mind. Don't like Don't like you Stepping on their shadow So it's like Ways of identifying them Which is huge um, So like, Does our character Even realize How much information He got <laughs> Like and He got to right <laughs> Yes That's my favorite part About the show Because every time We fucking We super root his shit He's like Writing shit down He's like Okay I got this Now Her name is this Like he's taking notes and every time, like the what was it? The sec- he only did this three times. The second time he did this, he was able to get all that information. He was able to go as far as the festival to now lo- know that fucking Ushio is one of them, but she ain't one of them. It's fucking. It's so much. It's so much. So, shit, bro. It's so. How did you? Uh, how did you feel about when he was doing like the counting? Right, because he started to count. Uh, you know, one, three, five, seven. He's counting the people mm-hmm. and. You know, we get to this scene where the festival, like we said, is still going on, but now we got a body, a stack of bodies, right? <laughs> like 40, 50, probably more people just stacked up. And the, the shadows that are in other people's bodies, like we see the little girl carrying, they're carrying bodies to get stacked onto the, the, the pile. 
how did how'd that make you feel, bro? Because to me, I was like, this is like pretty damning. Like, I didn't quite, I didn't think he was going to be able to die at that part. Because I'm like, I know in my mind, I'm thinking like he has to die. Yeah, because we got 25 episodes. <laughs> but, but like, I'm also thinking like, how they going to make him die here? Because it looks, it looks pretty harsh. Valid, man. That's a valid thought because it's, it's like, and even, and even when the Slender Man was like, yo, watch me cut the power I was fucking losing I was like yo what the fuck is he about to do to make him not be able to go back oh my god it, even even Slender Man mentioned, mentioned his eye like his mm-hmm. eye being mothers how the fuck did he get mothers we got so much information to give oh to get god. like the information that they gave us sparks more questions for information yes like the girl who came here to even kill the shadows she came here to save everybody mm-hmm but how does she even know how to save everybody? And, and you know, th- who taught her and, and what's going on? And then we saw all off and all the way off on the fucking other side of the island or <laughs> even off the island. Maybe we saw a dude with a whole different Slenderman sitting in a wheelchair <laughs> attached to like IV drips and shit. What we got fuck? so many fucking shit to answer. We got so many questions. On top of questions, man. This is a fucking... 25 episodes is, is probably about right. About right, yes. <laughs> I will be surprised if they manage to get this pacing right, but I'm... I'm fucking blown away about how good it is because I, I it's, this supernatural shit has to be done so well for it to be good in anime. Like, you know what I think of when I think of supernatural and I just didn't hit Gleepnir. Facts. Like, if you're going to be supernatural, you have to be an instant classic because supernatural in anime, I think is extremely hard to do. Mm-hmm. Unless it's like, you know, a parody kind of shit it's like it's it's power romance comedy fucking action but supernatural is something that's very fucking hard to do and they're nailing it man they're nailing it i'm i'm on board 100 i don't know what it is what what is it about uh uh was shinpei that's so likable i fucking the fact that i'm rooting he- for him the fact that he came here, no, not knowing anything, mm. to being to being the the center of everything, mm-hmm. and also finding like, and we we like this. I'm assuming we like this. Yes. He wants to save the people he loves, right? Yes, like, everybody. That's all he's here to do. He walked into a problem he didn't know was a problem. Yes, and the fact that he's not an idiot, I think that's what it is for me. Like, the fact that he's not stupid, right? The fact that he's taking the time to try to understand this like we are as viewers and he's not a fucking bumbling idiot when it comes to this shit. Like he's not tripping over his feet, and, you know, in the forest while he's running away. Like that kind of stupid. He's processing. He's taking time to think about every situation, every scenario, even when he had the fucking broken arm. Didn't he have a broken? No, she was about to break his leg. I must yeah. say, but didn't he have a broken leg too? But no. <laughs> but like. Him even processing it after, after he gets revived, um, after he gets super rude, and realize that he's further into the twenty second than he was prior to him coming back, and each time that to happen, he was getting further and further in. So now, even though Ushio didn't tell the him to be careful, there's a like the actual limit to that power. He now knows the limit to that power is up until the festival. And I or up, into, I mean, to him, up until his the first loved one die, right? Like you gotta yeah. assume that's his that's his failure point. And I, and I'm also I'm assuming that it's up until the festival because that's where everybody dies, right? Mm-hmm. Because mother and and the African American sentiment, like you said, <laughs> yeah, uh, they not letting they not they not letting anybody live past that day. Yeah. So he has this much time Three to get days. things solved, right? Three days, um, and I think also they were trying to say like the time shortens with major interactions, right? Mm. So because she saved him, yep. right? Because that was the the last time he died was the first time that she, that he actually had to be saved. 
that's why it kind of saved at that point. Mm. And, and it wasn't immediately at that point, but it was a little bit after that point, you know, right? where he had already gotten out of the water and they were already walking up the hill. So I think that's pretty cool too, where like something important or major happens in the scheme of how things are going down yeah. that changes the flow. So he could have died there. So maybe because she saved him, that was it. So we'll see how things go, but easily summertime rendering if spy family wasn't in this season summertime rendering would definitely be one of one for this this season but i still Absolutely. think it's eligible for that regardless to be honest we got two of two <laughs> right so it was whatever to me you know i i enjoy it man I, again even the smaller shit i am enjoying some of it i like i'm not as as much but i can't i can't wait i can't wait to just see where this goes further um, and then that's going to continue on into the summer because summer starts mid June, so June twentieth or so. At least with something good, we guarantee something good so far. Absolutely, absolutely, all the way up until then. All right, let's talk about Tomodachi game. Um, we just basically got this episode, the explanation of everything. And yeah, and the, the set traps. trap. So we're, we're that sick. was the, that was the coolest part about it. Yeah, and and we we agree on this. I'm pretty sure we agree on this one. Uh, we love just like Shinpei when a character is analytical, mm-hmm. understanding, sees what the problem is, and tries to fix it. Yeah. That what made this this moment better, right? And what and this is the kind of the moment I had been waiting for was that we get to see not necessarily the thought process, but how others perceived what his thought process was Mm -hmm. and seeing how actually like well calculated and how he did things, stuff that happened in the episodes and you remember them as they happened. Like for instance, him saying, Hey, you know, can you go first this time? Yep. But that was just him controlling the order. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. Like shit like that was clean. And then the fact that what's funny is I, yes, I took the time to do this. I paused it. I right clicked new tab my my internet browser. I went to the previous episodes. The name tags really did disappear, and we just did not notice. <laughs> and that shit is fucking dope. <laughs> that shit that that part actually having like okay, that's sick. I like that. I like that. I like that little touch that you would never even think about. You never even think about that little touch until you they say it and you decide. Hold on, let me let me just double check the continuity of this. And I rewind and I went to those episodes, skimmed through it, and those name tags slowly disappeared. I'm like, oh it, shit. <laughs> it instantly makes this this anime feel like it's better. Yeah. 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 Right? Because granular although, detail. although those episodes we didn't necessarily care about, mm-hmm. this is the kind of episode that makes all of that feel much more important. Yes. Where like I don't feel like that was a waste of time actually anymore. Because yeah. it was a point where we were watching this, and I was feeling more like it was becoming a waste of time. Yeah, and last but week then, that's when I felt like it got better. Yeah, and I didn't necessarily agree with Polo on that specifically yet, but right now I'm agreeing with Polo. It, it got better with that context of what happened, what's happening. Mm-hmm. He did do what kind of person he actually is. That shit was. I was like, I can enjoy this exactly. Time. Yeah, and to be honest, I still hate the way they try to. They try to cock tease or blue ball. Like I, their their cliffhangers fucking suck, and they're not even sucking in the, in the in the way of enticing like summertime rendering are or or what else? Like they suck like platinum men suck. Like those cliffhangers are god awful because the pacing just is not good and up. It's it's not great, and then all of a sudden you try to throw these huge bombshells. Literally last three minutes of an episode, and then the episode just ends. On a moment of, I'm going to play this game with you, and oh, but this isn't my first time playing the Tomodachi game, and it ends. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. all right, Eric, come on, man, you just you're doing too much, and when you do too much, I get irritated. <laughs> that was the only part that had me like, okay, why the fuck are we doing that? But, yeah. but, but also, why is he a murderer? Yes, and and, and I'm also be real here. Like the murder part wasn't even like the most interesting part of no, this. No, it was. That's funny. It was part, like it, wasn't. it was. It was like the conflict it caused was interesting, and then like, who is this like mad genius psychopath kid? <laughs> exactly. It, it it just gives us the who is this. My question to you is, if the situation was like that in Tamanachi game for us, and you find out I killed three people. 
Would you freak out like they did? I mean, and here, hear me out, because it might be because I'm not Asian. Yeah, um, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> and they don't, they don't see crime like that. It might be Austin. because yeah, I'm black. <laughs> You're right. And, and I'm not saying like black people see a lot of crime, but I'm saying if me and Polo been kicking it for the last two or three years, right? Best friends. And then I found out that the year before or two years before I started kicking with Polo, he killed three people. Was it self defense? <laughs> I, I don't really feel obligated to ask. Yeah. Might I watch my back? But also, like I ain't watched my back at all these last two or three years, and I ain't felt no like intent that you was gonna kill me. I'm probably not gonna care. <laughs> and also, it's not the moment to care in the middle of a game that's life or death. Where if I lose this game entirely, I'm gonna have to go ahead and die anyway because I ain't got enough money to pay that debt back. <laughs> is, is it that important? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you spitting? You spitting tonight? <laughs> Oh my god, that's so funny. Yeah, I was thinking about it, and I didn't even think about the the context of the two to three years. I was even thinking about it, the fact of thirteen year, whatever the fuck it was, for no way longer than that. Yeah, wait, seventeen almost years. <laughs> I even if it's seventeen years, and I found out in that seventeen years you killed three people. I don't, I don't care. I, yeah, just don't tell the cop. Why didn't you tell me? I could have helped. Or if you, need, if you, you know, what I'm saying, like if you needed to do something, I'm, I ain't gonna let you go down on your own. You know, that's a brother, right there. <laughs> but yeah, I it, that moment, the way they reacted, I was like, huh. I didn't even think about the fact that you know this is Japanese people and they don't see fucking, they barely see crime, let alone murder. So for them, it's probably like a big fucking deal. And but why wouldn't they think like? Oh wait, he murdered three people, but he's not in juvie. Uh, maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's self defense. Obviously, yeah. it was self defense. Motherfucker's not in jail, so that part was just a little weird to me. I'm like, yeah, but I am interested in seeing what kind of genius this dude is. Yeah, or why he murdered anybody. Because that, that as soon as they they kind of gave us that thought, like. He is an actual genius Cause like yeah He seemed like he was smart In episode one and two Kind of ish area yeah. But now it's solidified The man is a, is a con man A genius uh, Or a psychic at the very least um, <laughs> <laughs> he He's dope right But now we just need more Context and information on him And I hope that they They provide it in a way That doesn't make it feel stale Yes bro Yes that's where, and this is where it get going to, it's going to get interesting because now you got two people in the game versus other people that we don't really give a fuck about. Like at least we supposedly supposed to care about these other students, which I, to be honest, I didn't. <laughs> um, I don't really, I still don't really care about any of them. But I'm interested to see where this goes. I think us going against randoms will make this a little bit better because we get to root for our guy. We we'll get to right. root, root for somebody because now. I kind of care. I want to see him fucking destroy this game. Yeah, I want to see him be a dog, be the dog he always, everybody thought he was. But yes. also, dude who didn't play this game before and made it out, he's clearly, he got to be smarter than he, than he says he is too. Yeah, or that he showed. Be. Yeah. All that shit he did for this weird ass breaking up the friendship plan, I think that was kind of stupid. So yeah, yeah, bullshit. <laughs> I, I definitely think think it was trash. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> like that, he just pulled it out of that. Exactly. <laughs> but he was supposedly planning this for so many years. Let's uh, let's wrap. All right, we just finished talking about Tamadachi game. Y'all think it's making a comeback? Let us know. Summertime rendering easily episode of the week. Not easily because you know you do got Spy Family. Spy Family is another great episode. Um. Before we uh, went on a break, we got to know Mike Check Wife Waifu. We asked if you got to live or a vacation anywhere, would it be between Hawaii or Alaska? What would you choose? We choose in Hawaii. Uh, we also talked about love after world domination and people pleasing. Are you a people pleaser? Do you need help stopping? Uh, Let us know. We'll help. 8004. Hey, Mike Jones up on the low. He might be able to help you with that. I've been in uh, too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We also talked about what Polo said getting to the juice with Shield Hero. We hope it gets to the juice, like he said. We we wanted to get really good because we tired of you know feeling attached to this and it's not gonna be like that. We also dropped anime. Um there's no drop anime so far this season or you keep going. Um our anime of the week, like I said, was sometime rendering rendering uh, and we also we're getting ready to play V Rising. Polo's streaming it by the time you listen to this podcast. 
And that's been episode 152 of Mike Check Wife Wife Food. I'm at Polo Born Fly on all social media. I'm at King Taliano on all social media. You can follow our social medias at Mike Check Wife on Twitter and at Mike Check Wife Wife on Instagram and TikTok. And as always, Mike, Mike, Mike Check. Check. Short echo. You're now tuned into Mike Check Wife Wife.